London, August 1964, the first International Congress of Social Psychiatry, a major event, drawing together and organizing the practitioners of the new psychiatry that has been advancing in Britain and the United States for a decade. One paper in particular attracts attention for its bold, direct title, one that stirs both doubt and agreement. The destruction of the mental hospital as a place of institutionalization. Its author is a 40-year-old Italian psychiatrist, Franco Basaglia, since 1961 the director of the psychiatric hospital in Gorizia, where he began Italy's first, and at the time only, experiment with a therapeutic community. From the start, the paper goes to the heart of the question. Basaglia writes, In 1925, a manifesto by French artists who signed themselves the Surrealist Revolution addressed to the directors of the mental hospitals ended thus tomorrow morning during your rounds when utterly bereft of lexicon you seek to communicate with these men may you recall and recognize that in their regard you are superior in one respect and one respect only force as early as the end of the 18th century Basalia continues one of the forefathers of psychiatry, Philippe Pinel, claimed the right of freedom for the insane, but a freedom allowed in an enclosed space and placed in the hands of the legislator and the psychiatrist. Two centuries later, force and mortification still rule the life of our asylums. Basalia cites the work of Russell Barton on institutional neurosis and the observation of a contemporary French psychiatrist, Henri A., that today the object of psychiatry is no longer the mad who frightens, but the sick man who is afraid. At last, Basalia remarks, the mental hospital has come to be seen as something from which the patient must be protected, saved. Actually, Everywhere there are still bars, grates, gates, keys, thongs, staff with poor technical and often human preparation. But the problem has been raised. Destroying the mental hospital, Franco Basaglia concluded at that 1964 Congress, is necessary and urgent, if not plainly self-evident. Franco Basaglia was born in Venice on March 11, 1924, the second of three children in a well-to-do family. An impatient, curious student, he took his degree in medicine at Padua in 1949 and a specialized degree in 1952 at the Neuropsychiatric University Clinic. He worked there for 13 years as assistant to Professor Belloni, 
an old-style academic with a strictly organic medical background. In 1953, Franco Basaglia married Franca Ongaro, also from Venice. They would have two children and establish an extraordinary intellectual partnership. He wrote many papers together with her and shared a common social and political engagement. Basaglia set to work immediately to put psychopathology in communication with phenomenology. His extensive scientific output during these university years utilized such authors as Binswanger, Minkowski, Strauss, Husserl, Heidegger, Jaspers, Merleau-Ponty, and Sartre, most of them quite outside the mainstream for a neuropsychiatrist and certainly deviating from the Italian academic community of the day. Thus, Basaglia, the philosopher in his professor's ironic phrase, realized that the university was not the place for him, though he had gotten tenure. And one day in the autumn of 1961, for the first time in his life, he set foot inside a mental hospital. He had been named director of the public mental hospital of Gorizia. the keys, the screams, the stench reminded him of the prison in which he had spent the last six months of the war, charged with anti-fascist activities. In describing the inmates of these institutions, Franco Basaglia would repeatedly quote Primo Levi's description of concentration camp inmates. Now imagine a man who, in addition to his loved ones, is deprived of his home, his habits, his clothes, in a word, everything literally all his worldly possessions. He is an empty man, reduced to suffering and need, neglectful of dignity and discernment, because it is easy for a man who has lost everything to lose himself. È per l'ospedale psichiatrico che sono qui, per il manicomio insomma. I malati di mente li troviamo sempre in fondo a un viale di periferia, forse perché la loro immagine non turbi la nostra esistenza. At the mental hospital in Gorizia, Basaglia and his team experimented with a new method of work and began to develop a new vision of psychiatry and its function. Here is Gorizia in the first television documentary, The Garden of Abel, produced in 1968 by Sergio Zavoli for Italian public television. Professor Basaglia, si rimprovera questo ospedale di essere più una denuncia civile che una proposta psichiatrica. Vorrei partire sulla provocazione che lei mi fa dicendomi denuncia civile più che proposta psichiatrica io non saprei assolutamente proporre niente di psichiatrico in un manicomio tradizionale in un ospedale dove i malati sono legati credo che nessuna terapia di nessun genere eh, terapia biologica o psicologica possa dare un giovamento a queste persone che sono costrette in una situazione di sudditanza e di cattività da chi li deve curare